Good morning, Dr. Banner. This is the Valder Beebe Show broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas. And they told me that you are with Poison Control Center, and you're going to be talking about snakes this morning. That's right. Glad to do uh, it. All right, let's do it. What, what do you got that's going to continue to put us on edge? Well, you know, we see a lot of venomous snake bites in the United States, and even though it may be a little cool today, uh, they're going to be coming out pretty soon. And Texas will get it a little bit quicker than Oklahoma, but uh, we're already anticipating, uh, you know, we've had a fair amount of rain, fair amount of vegetation, lots of places to hide, and, um, you know, a lot of people are going to get out there this summer and get bitten. So we'd like you to be ready and prepared for what to do. Okay, so we're gonna have, are we going to have these incidents of getting bitten maybe when the grass is high, or are they going to be in normal places like our backyard where the grass is manicured? Well, you know, as you come out of the winter, there may be some brush accumulated. Uh, some of them are going to come out at night uh, to feed, and they will be right in your yard um, in the suburban Dallas area. Um, we see that in, uh, in our area. They will we'll come out... Uh, come out of the woods, if you will, and come over to feed. And so you go out in your backyard and think you're relatively safe, and they may be right there in the grass, especially the smaller snakes can hide down in, right in your grass, and you won't, uh, uh, you won't be able to see them very easily, especially at night. Okay, let's look at some of the statistics. It says 98% of the venomous snake bites in North America, uh, including rattlesnakes and copperheads, these are actually happening? Yeah, they're going to happen in the summertime. And uh, of the 5,000 that we get in the United States, most all of them are going to be in the warm months. Uh, they're going to start about April or May and persist into September. Last September, we had a lot of activity. So most people think that when school starts, the snakes uh, start school or something. But uh, even into September and uh, around here into October. So. But the peak activity is going to be July and August. Uh, people are out, a lot of activities at the lakes and in rural areas, and so uh, that's when you're going to have to be most concerned. Okay. So let me ask you this. That talked about venomous snake bites. Just say you get a snake bite. You go to the doctor. What are you supposed to tell the doctor to help him determine if this was a venomous or non-venomous snake? Well, uh, for, for the most part, people may not even see the snake. And, and so we, we know how to look at the bite itself, what the fang marks look like. We can usually tell a lot about where you live, what kind of activity you're involved in. Um, and then we're going to do some blood work and see if there's anything causing uh, damage to your ability to clot your blood, um, if there's damage to your muscle. We can tell a lot of that. So we can tell a lot by how that venomous uh, envenomation progresses, and what your blood work looks like. What can we do to protect <coughs> ourselves uh, of this seems to be naturally occurring event? Because really, we're just encroaching on the territory that was previously uh, wild territory, and now we're gen you know we're we're uh, making it neighborhoods. So, what can we do to protect ourselves? Is there anything we need to do? Well, I think you need to respect the snakes. Yes, we are encroaching into their environment. Um, uh, you need to, if you're going out uh, to clean up some stuff or work around there, watch where you put your hands. Uh, don't reach into places where you can't see. Um, disturb things with, you know, brush and stuff. Disturb it with a stick before you get in there, okay? Give yourself a little distance. If you're walking or working in, in areas like that, wear some heavier boots wear some nice heavy jeans, uh, something that the, the snake fangs can't penetrate very easily. Um, so you want some heavier jeans, not designer jeans necessarily. And um, so get something good solid between you and the snake. But uh, if you've got headphones in, you're not going to hear a rattlesnake. So that's just something to keep in mind. But the most important thing is to, to be aware that they can be in suburban areas. Um, so if you've got frogs and you've got lizards and things like that, you know, small um, squirrels and, and minor mammals, they're going to be there looking for those. So the snakes are following uh, the, their food. This is great advice. Today my guest has been Dr. William Banner, Jr. He's the medical director of the Oklahoma Poison Control Center 
and clinical professor of pharmacy at the Oklahoma University College of Pharmacy in Oklahoma. Dr. Banner, where would you send my audience on the web as we wrap up to get more information? Because we really need to know this. Well, you know, we are going to recommend you go straight to the hospital, but you can also call your poison control center for advice. The 800 number is 222-1222, or you can Google your regional poison center in, in Texas. There's also crofab.com, which is a website that has a lot of biology, crofab.com. There's a lot of information there on the treatment, antivenom treatment, and uh, those are, are two good sources of information for you. Dr. Banner, you've been a wealth of information. Thank you for being on the Valder Beebe Show and helping our audience. We really appreciate it. Nice to see you. Bye-bye.